Welcome to the summit, what is effortless wholeness? And I now have the pleasure to introduce you to David Bingham. Hi, David. Hi, lovely to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. And um, you're in England and you're yes. a spiritual guide. Uh, mm -hmm. You help people uh, see who they are, their true nature or who they actually are. And yes. that's what we'll be talking about today. Like you mentioned is effortless. It's like an effortless being. You like that expression, which I like. Yes. Too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds nice. <laughs> no effort. Yes. <laughs> But um, can you can you speak about the effortless being? What what you mean by that term? Well, it's something which we we naturally rest as all the time, and it's just that we also have this secondary instrument, which is the mind, which creates a dualistic experience. But when we just notice what's arising in any moment, and this is true of everyone, this isn't just people who feel as though there's been some sort of transition or some awakening experience. This is the truth for everyone. We're all always resting as the effortless being. It's just the superimposed on that is the, is the mind, which gives a, a commentary to what's happening. And we've, we've all been conditioned to, to function from the mind primarily. So that's how it seems to be, that's how effortless being seems to be obscured because the mind is something we've been conditioned into using through the education system and through everyone we meet, through the media, through all entertainment. It, it, everything in the world as it exists at the moment is functioning primarily from the subject-object mode of experience, which is, the, which is the mind. But effortless being is there always for everyone, and it's just a matter of of noticing what's arising effortlessly. So thoughts arise effortlessly, sensations, feelings, emotions, perceptions, they're all arising effortlessly. But then we can also consciously engage the mind. And when we do that, we can actually utilize it in a constructive way. It's just that many people have been conditioned to have the mind running in the background. So it tends to be it tends to be a distraction and it tends to appear to, over, to obscure effortless being when really it doesn't because effortless being is always there. Yeah. Yeah, because that's who you are. You are effortless yes. here now yes. living life. We don't put any yes. effort into being here. We, we wake up every day and we're here. And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, ethics being, is, it's something which, even that term is very attractive because on, on, the, on a deep level, everyone knows that that's what we truly are. So when someone says, oh, you're effortless being, and effortless being is actually impersonal. So there's the personal which is existing with, within the mind. But what we're resting as effortlessly is impersonal being. It's an impersonal field or an impersonal ocean. It's just, it's just the totality. So it's quite good to be able to make that distinction because there are many teachings which are asking things like, who am I? And, and really it's the wrong question because the question should be, what am I? Because it, what we truly are is impersonal. And so if we make that distinction, we can enjoy the contrast of experience. So we, we know our true nature is the infinite ocean of pure beingness, but also we can have the fun of the ride of being an individual and all the, all the, everything that goes with that. And uh, that, that contrast is really enjoyable. So it is a singular field in reality, but the reason we're having the human experience is to know our true nature by contrast. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like it, it, you could say, oh, I am effortless being, but yes. it's, it's, yeah, in a way, that's what you are, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it can also become something yes. like personalized, but it's, it's completely impersonal. 
Yes, exactly. So, so to say I am effortless being is putting two and two together and making five because the very nature of effortlessness is that there is no one present when there is effortless being. There is just simply what's arising in this infinite ocean of beingness. So that's the, that's the distinction really. And when people ask questions like, am I aware? The same applies there. It's actually the wrong question because if people use the term awareness, which can seem personal, so it isn't always the best term to use. But again, um, asking the question I am aware is actually putting the individual um, at the center when really um, one could say there is awareness or there is beingness or, or there is effortless being. And making that distinction makes it much easier to realize one's true nature because it takes, well, it just removes individuality from the whole equation. Yeah. Yeah. And because if there is still that individuality, then it's like, it, then there is a pull towards something. There's still this seeking for something. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. But when that's gone, like the root of that is gone, then yes. it just is what is. And yes. Yes. that is very effortless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we can, we can then function from effortless being because that's really the benefits of realization because we, we actually have five, there are five sheaths or bodies, which in Indian uh, terminology, they're called the koshas. And in the current age, most people are locked into the first three, which is the physical body, the emotional body and the mental body. But the fourth and fifth ones are actually the most important in terms of, um, well, it's certainly in terms of joy and also in terms of creativity because effortless being is actually the fourth one, which is the body of wisdom. And, and the fourth kosher is, is where we reside effortlessly. And, and from there can arise inspiration, and just everything coming to us without any effort rather than having to engage the mind. So the more familiar we become with resting as effortless being, the more we open the door to intuition and to functioning from our, our infinite nature and, for, uh, and to allow infinite intelligence to actually take part in our personal experience. And, and the benefit of that also is that that the body of wisdom is next to the body of bliss and the more familiar we become with with effortless being and with residing effortlessly then we actually begin to merge into the body of bliss and that's when life just becomes amazing and there can be a tendency for for um, moving closer to the mind to the body of mind because we're more familiar with that and so, so that's something that can happen. But, but really, the most balanced way is to rest as effortless being. And then we have access both to, to Anandamaya Kosha, which is the body of bliss. And also, we have access to Manamaya Kosha, which is the body of mind. But when we're accessing the mind from effortless being, we're actually allowing infinite intelligence to come through into the way the mind functions. So the, the, the mind isn't dominated by individual concerns then. So one could say that there's a kind of surrender, but it isn't that the individual surrenders, it's just that surrendering happens, which is when, when it's seen that our true nature is effortless being, we can just totally relax into that. And then and then from there we can function much more effectively because there isn't there isn't any sort of individual motivation in that respect. So we're we could say we're in service to to our infinite nature rather than in service to our individual nature. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like there's space for yes. whatever the unknown, you know, source yes. of God or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that 
it, that, that's when that's when we can become most effective, really, because um, and, and also in I guess in biblical terms, we could say that self-realization is the return to the Garden of Eden, because eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is actually ha having a game with the uh, with the individual mind, because the the individual mind is a dualistic instrument. So it's always based on things like right and wrong or good and evil or deciding that this is really good or I do like you and I don't like you. So all of that dualistic stuff is where all of the problematic experiences reside. But when we just rest as our effortless nature and we're not predominantly functioning from the, from the mind, then we're back in the Garden of Eden, which is when infinite intelligence begins to orchestrate things uh, on an experiential level. And that's when it just becomes amazing because infinite love comes in, infinite intelligence comes in, synchronicity, compatibility, everything just comes to us. And it, it's been the way that, that, that all the communication I've done over the years has happened really because it's, it's just allowing those who resonate uh, to sort of come forward. And I never initiate anything. So I, I actually function from effortless being in terms of any sort of guidance I give to people because I never initiate anything. I never try to pr promote myself or to set up meetings or to do anything in that respect. I only respond to people who feel inspired. And it's been really amazing because there have been thousands of people that I've spoken to who actually realize their true nature using that term and they've all come to me. So there's been, there's been some guiding intelligence. There's, there is infinite intelligence guiding the whole process and it knows who to match up who with whoever it is. And that's, that isn't just true of me. That's true obviously of all teachers because we, people resonate with different teachers and different teachings and it's all perfectly valid. It isn't that any one person has all the answers. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just that, that it's, um, it's like a sweet shop, you know, and you have all these different flavors and it depends on which flavor you resonate with most. And, and so that, that's how we get drawn to a particular person really. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also interesting because you, you don't really actually need a teacher or a student it, it, it all is whole as it is already absolutely. All absolutely. right and absolutely yeah so it's like we don't have to go anywhere to get anything or be on a path or because no. we're already it it's just a matter of recognizing it yes exactly what, yeah. <laughs> and that's also that that's something i've noticed certainly uh, since November last year when Rhonda Byrne released her book because I've been receiving quite a lot of emails from people where there has been spontaneous realization and it seems as though the way the infinite being is re revealing itself to itself is becoming easier and easier. So years ago it seemed as though we had to be in the monastery all our life and, and then it seemed as though we need the guidance of a teacher and we have to undergo certain practices and things uh, and then it seemed as though we need a conversation with somebody or to, or to attend meetings but now there are many people where there's realization just spontaneously happening and they sometimes sometimes it's just it's just a phrase that they hear or, or it's just a resonance with the sort of frequency of the teacher and, and so all of that's happening effortlessly. There isn't anything we need to do. And so for anyone who is seeking, really just functioning in the most effortless way and following that feeling of joy and, and love and, and compatibility uh, and just tr trusting one's own inner knowing is the, the most important thing because Everything about the world is to do with a kind of hierarchy where it's, there's the idea that there are, the, there are people who know more than you do and there are teachers who know much more. But accepting our own sovereignty is the key thing, both in the world but also in the spiritual sense, because we are already, everyone already is the totality of existence. We're already the infinite being. 
we're already the, the, the infinite impersonal ocean. And so, so just being able to function from that level of equality and not putting a teacher above us or putting anyone above us, then or putting anyone below us either, that's an important thing, you know, yeah. pretending, you know, our teaching is better than everyone else's or, you know, because we don't know, because we just, we're just this open space in which things can happen. And, and so it's, it's just having that sense of, of equality with, with all of life. And, and that's really, that's, that's how we can merge with, not that anyone does actually merge and, you know, language is really limited, but for this open space to become totally familiar and known without seeming to be obscured in any way, it is just from that effortless space of beingness. Yeah, yeah, and it, that, that's what we are. We are that being it, uh, beingness, and what happens is, is life, and and it is always in a motion. You could say life is always in a movement, and and it's, it's but it's we may not from our little dot in the universe understand that movement or know how the world yes. works and all that and that's fine it's it's just it's more like unknown like that open space the unknown and then you live that moment by moment because really you can know everything maybe but who knows if that's right you know and and yeah. maybe you'll just find out there's more right and there's absolutely. no end to anything really yes. so absolutely it is totally infinite i think anything that's known by the mind is a limitation you know because it's just a concept uh i feel that certainly when effortless being is predominating it seems to be that what we need to know in that moment comes to us and it's so that also is effortless so what we need to do or say or how we act in a particular moment or respond to something uh, is, is just present because there is no time we're just stationary you know being this is just stationary it isn't that we go anywhere or and so so once that's seen then uh we, we can just we just enjoy it for what it is and but I, I think that it, you know we can play as well I think that there's one way of there's one way of seeing our true nature which is just that everything is arising there is no one and and that is in a way that's the most simple form that's the initial form but it's a bit like riding a bike um, just seeing that uh, in a really simple way is is like when we learn to ride a bike when you can only ride it in a straight line you know you're on the bike and you're saying oh there is no one there's nothing i can do but the purpose of having the bike is to be able to go places and do different things and have different experiences so so there is the paradox of the absolute and the relative and so it is ultimately true that there is no one in an absolute sense but in a relative sense there is the appearance of individuality and the appearance of the mind and the appearance of the emotions and and, and so for instance my feeling is the the reason we have the dualistic experience is so that the infinite love of our infinite nature can be experienced in the subject object mode because infinite love when it is just an ocean of impersonal love it doesn't have that focal point. Whereas in the subject object mode, whether it's in a relationship with a person or with an animal or with, with the environment or whatever it is, that, in, that infinite love can come in and can be experienced in the most intense way. And I think that that's why we have this experience that, so, so, that we can, so that we can have the, the, the enjoyment of that really focused, um intense experience yeah yeah because it is it is the whole spectrum that we experience as, as humans in the world yes. and and sometimes we are like oh i don't want all the dark stuff i just don't want all 
I just want light. I, I just want love and joy. And but it is everything. And and even in the darkest of the darkest, everything is actually whole and complete there too. Yes. Yes. Although it's, it's the mind cannot understand that, right? <laughs> But it is, yeah, and, and it is really, it is only, uh, it's a play really, the dark and the light and all the different characters. Uh, but but what, what, what I found it is that with, with realisation of one's true nature as effortless being, also the whole spectrum of the relative becomes available too, so that I think most humans are living in a very narrow band of experience. So their, their experience of duality is actually quite a limited experience of duality. But I think there's a really much broader um, range. The polarities are much wider than people realize. And, and I think, you know, looking at the current experience people are having in the world, I think that that is, that's becoming more accessible to a lot of people. I think people are questioning lots of things about the structures that exist in the world and um, there is, there's a kind of opening to understanding more about the, the way the world works and and so that's, that, that's something, I, I only speak about that really when I, when I'm speaking one-to-one -one with people who are open to that because lots of people the, the mind programs don't permit the perception of those polarities because they're so huge in, in a human sense. And without the stability of the knowing of our true, infinite, imperturbable nature, then they can be quite frightening, actually. So it isn't something that, um, you know, you can speak about with, every, with, with everyone. You have to uh, accept that you know, we, th there's a, there's an Indian term, which is um, Pragya Parad, which means uh, the remnants of ignorance. And to have the human experience, there has to be an element where we're sort of concealing an aspect of our true nature to be able to have this relative experience. And so, um, and, and that's true of everyone. I think even even the most enlightened beings, there has to be the the the, the, re, the remnants of ignorance, because otherwise, I don't think there'd be anything appearing at all. <laughs> yeah, and but that's that's part of being a human. I, I guess there may always be some some contraction in the yes. body of some kind. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. But exactly. that that's okay too. That that's the thing. It's like what is 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 complete. So, however, yes. that what is, yes, is, <laughs> it, yeah, is still yeah. complete. So we we can absolutely, yeah. So that that's a nice thing uh, about that too. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I don't have to be putting any effort into all you know to know who I am. It's it's more about yes. just this is it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. And. And that's really that, that's really the key thing because with with the, the stability or the foundation of our true infinite nature, when that's fully known, then it doesn't matter what's going on. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what's going on in an individual level because it is only a play, and and that really is uh, that that that's really total liberation when we can when we can just when everything is just going on as it is and and and, and we're not affected by it um it, which doesn't mean that we don't have the experiences but it's just that when there's the total clarity it's like when we when we go to the cinema and we're watching a film we can become really absorbed in that film and we can identify with one of the characters and we think it's all very real and while the identifications happening, then we're we're totally immersed in the drama, and it all seems to be going on. But then there's a point at which there's a realization that it is where we remember that it is only a film, 
and when that happens, we can have we can have the joy of the film, but we're not having to endure the the sort of roller coaster ride of the emotions and uh, more the turbulence that goes with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably not yeah. as intense, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the, the, the drama like... goes out of it. Hmm? The the drama goes out of it, and and also I think with with. Um, with realization, we're functioning from effortless being, we're functioning from neutrality. So there's no longer a feeling that we need to persuade anyone of anything or that we need to get anything from anyone. You know, so much of the way people function is to do with trying to sell them something or to persuade them to do something or to, or to get them to believe what you believe. Um, effortless being by nature, it, it means that everything's okay as it is, we don't need to persuade anyone, we don't need to sell anything to anyone, um, and everything's okay as it is, and, and that's, you know, that's, uh, it, it just makes life much easier, and so the, the way, the way our relationships are, they tend to be much more based on fun, because there isn't anything, there's no preoccupation with anything, so we don't, we're not preoccupied with something that we're trying to achieve or, or and we're not preoccupied with feeling that there's a lack of anything so we're already home and we're already in the garden of eden so infinite intelligence takes care of everything so we just return to our true purpose which is just which is the true purpose of the manifestation in my opinion which is just to have an amazing time you know it's just to have it's really just to have fun and um and so that's the that, that's the only purpose of it, really. Yeah, yeah, and that that naturalness of our of our being naturally just wants to have yes. joy and and share yes. love and yeah. Yeah, and there does seem to be there does seem to be something happening collectively, I've certainly noticed this, that the number of people and the ease with which realization can happen now, it's just, um, it's moving into a different realm of experience. You know, the, so many people, you know, are, are sort of realizing that there is this opportunity and it, it is attainable and, and it isn't special. It isn't something that only certain people can have it's something that is uh, really available and and that's really where equality is important because when we know that it's available to everyone then we can accept that it's available to us if we feel as though we're inferior in some way or that it can't you know it couldn't happen for us or that um, there's going to be some impediment um, that are, all, all of those limiting concepts are falling away and I, I feel Spontaneous realization seems to be the predominating thing at the moment with people who are contacting me. Lots of people are contacting me to say that there, there has been realization, but it hasn't required anything in particular. It's just the simplicity of, of seeing. And um, I was speaking to somebody actually in an interview the other day, and this lady was saying how there is a kind of reversal, which is where previously the individuality was at the fore. But then with this reversal, infinity is at the fore and the individual sort of moves into the background. And um, it is, you know, we can, we can speculate about all sorts of things. In, in reality, everything is just arising equally. So whether it's whether it's a thought arising or whether it's the sound of a passing car or, um, you know, a sensation in the body or somebody speaking or listening to music or there, all of those forms arise equally. So there isn't, uh, there, there isn't actually a background in a foreground. There is only unity. Uh, it, it's just that it, it appears as though there can be a reversal when it when it seemed as though the individual was at the foreground in the foreground, but there there is just the simplicity of what's arising. Yeah, it's it's like, and that simplicity 
is quite obvious when the absence of this self. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, this, this. Yes. Yeah. Well, it is, you know, some people say that it's mysterious, but what I feel is happening now is the simplicity of it is becoming more apparent. And it actually isn't mysterious. To me, it's really, it's really just that we've been conditioned into functioning in the subject object mode of experience, where we feel as though we're the individual and, and then there's this world outside ourselves. But really, realization is just when the subject object mode is turned off. And that's all this is. You know, yeah. it isn't, it isn't yeah. anything that is, you know, mysterious. It's just that there's this secondary device called the mind, which is giving the idea that you really are this person existing in time and space. Yeah, but, but it appears like that. That's, that's why we all believe it and we're taught. Yeah. And it, the senses make us tell that, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. But, yeah. uh, so that's why it's so difficult to get it. Or, but but <laughs> that's why you can't get it too, because the mind will never buy it. The mind is like, nope, nope. I see a subject object. I I hear yes. existence. I hear you know. Yeah. It'll never get it. And no, the mind certainly won't. The mind hasn't got it. Got a hope. But um, but but the it's only the mind that makes it seem difficult, because when when we just rest as effortless being, the mind. The, the mind can't be present in effortless being, so the mind can't function, so the limiting thoughts about it being difficult can't remain there in effortless being. So mm. that's, that's why just recognizing effortless being is, uh, is really liberation and it's already present. And it, it's just a matter, you know, people say, what have I got to do? Well, it's absolutely nothing because it, um, it doesn't require anything just to be because being is effortless. Yeah, it's you can't not not be, you know, like no. <laughs> you accept, no. right? We're being right now and and that's it. But it seems too <laughs> simple to just be that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and well, I think that's else, why it's and, and everything else <laughs> is being why... too, right? Yes, it's, it's, it's a, Yeah, and it's a, the appearing. Like yeah, it's the appearance of all this beingness, and and it's one and the same. Yes. It's not separate, but it's like you said, unity, yes. right? Um, yeah. Yes. Well, I I think one of the things that, that that's important to know is that effortless being doesn't mean stagnation. It it doesn't mean that we sit in an armchair and we're just effortlessly being in the armchair all day and we're not active. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's realizing that it's realizing that we can function from effortless being, which is a which is a different way of experiencing. So when we're experiencing from the mind, it requires effort, and so it's things like planning and focus and and draw, trying to draw certain things to us and push other things away. Whereas with effortless being, there's no duality. So there is no attachment or aversion. We're just, everything's just arising as it is. But what we have access to in effortless being is infinite intelligence. But it, it isn't that infin, infinite intelligence is something where we know everything. It's that, it, it's that the infinite, infinite intelligence that's innate within effortless being begins to play a part so the way we access that is through our intuition really you know that that, mm. that when the mind isn't functioning then we tend to have certain things which just come to us without even trying and, and so it's more to do with just responding rather than trying to initiate all sorts of things and that's when life just becomes really joyful it's just uh, it's just being as little children and and, um, and that, because that's how children are, children aren't planning. They're not thinking, well, I've got to do all these things today so that I'll have some way to sleep tonight and have some food and have a bed to sleep in, you know. <laughs> they, just, they just focus on playing. And, yeah. and that's, really, that's really how effort is being. Um, well, it's because they're children generally, um, well, certainly up to a certain age, Effortless being is, is is predominating far more than it is as the, uh, as people get older because the mind creates all these 
concepts it creates the sense of individuality and the personality and then it builds that illusory self and then lots of the activity is to sort of maintain that but uh, you know that isn't present for children so much yeah it takes it takes a lot of effort to keep the person going right that's oh, it's kind of exhausting it sure does. yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> it certainly does. I think we've all experienced that, haven't we? And all the preoccupations, you know, things to do with appearance and the self-image and, and, you know, how we, how we look to the world and whether we look old or young or, you know, what I need to do to look better and what I need to do this year and all of that stuff. Mm. It's a massive burden and we don't need it. It isn't necessary at all. Yeah, and and uh, and that's the thing. It's it's all, you're already complete, just as you are, and you don't have to worry yeah. about all that. Of course, you need food on the table yeah. and shelter, but it's yeah. it's um, and and that's what the mind is for as well. There's nothing wrong with the mind at all. The mind is yeah. beautiful to have to make us live, but it's it's just like we yeah. have letting it yeah. take over somehow, and yeah. Uh, yeah that is is yeah. driving everything but no <laughs> <laughs> and the mind also wants to have a rest because it's been you know it's been put center stage and it's sort of playing the leading role but really it's only got a bit part and so you've got someone who isn't very experienced which is the mind and it doesn't really know what to do it can only perform a few little functions and then it has the role of trying to run everything. And it's the wrong instrument completely. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. And how can people get in touch with you? Your website? Yeah, I have a website. Uh, it's nonconceptualawareness.com. Uh, there are quite a few videos and transcripts and things on there. But uh, I've also been invited to do more interviews and things recently. Uh, so I like to emphasize that it isn't necessary really to be having conversations with anyone. As you said earlier, uh, this can just be, it can just be seen very simply and, and accepting that as a possibility um, opens the door to that. And so, um, you know, everyone already knows this everybody is the totality of existence everyone is the effortless being but we just have this little pet called the individual and we're also having some fun with as well <laughs> yeah yeah well thank you for the work you do and um, helping you know pointing to to who you are that's that's great thank you yeah it's well it's just really it's it's just really nice to to be of service and that's all it is really you, you know you recognize because i think the the human experience is the idea that if we can take control of it with the mind then we're going to be able to have a lot more fun because we're going to be directing it but we overlook the fact that we're relinquishing infinite intelligence as the sort of guiding force to our experience when we do that and that's how we return home. That's how the prodigal son returns home when we realize that, yeah, it's okay to do that, but the, the mind really is so limited by contrast. And um, by relinquishing the mind, we can have the most amazing time. And, and everything we're seeking, all the love, the bliss, infinity, and total connection with everything. Not that there is a connection because we are the totality, but um just for the total enrichment to come into our experience um is uh completely effortless yeah and uh i i'm very glad that that you're sharing uh, and, and that you are open to to be with other people with with this message the only game in town <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> lovely to meet you yeah, nice to meet you too.